and my kids run down the battery, so it's just great. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the Wendover Garden Program. Um, this is actually a, a grant that we were awarded through Grow Appalachia, which is a FRIA. Um, so I have um, passed around, I should have passed around uh, the application for everybody. And honestly, this is just paperwork that I got to keep to make sure that I get all my stuff clear with FRIA. Um, so if you could just fill that out. And then mainly what I really, really need from everybody tonight is going to be your, um, your name and a good email address and a good cell phone. So um, I have, I'll be sending out mass uh, texts for everybody just to kind of keep you in the loop as well as emails. And what I've found is that a lot of this is just trying to figure out how to communicate with people. Because if you're like me, I hate social media and I am not on Facebook unless I absolutely have to be on Facebook. And so <laughs> my other plan is to limit um, how much you're having to scroll around and find information. We're going to have a Facebook group. So um, I'll get that Facebook group up and if you all want to join that, I will be putting information there. That way you can go straight to it and you're not having to look around too much, okay? Um, so tonight uh, I, we will be giving out our uh, garden planner. Anybody watching? That's what it's going to look like. Um, the, I went through and looked at this and it's got a lot of information and I'm not saying that you have to use all of it. But one of the things, part of the program, is that we ask you to kind of keep track of yields. So, um, by, throughout the program, we'll have different times where I'll have you fill it out how much you're harvesting. And it's nothing, nothing complicated. It's <laughs> the way that we did it when I went through the program was how many um, plastic grocery bags of green beans did you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because what are you out there using most likely anyway? <laughs> but a plastic tray or a plastic grocery bag, you're putting your green beans in there, right? So that's the sort of thing that we'll be asking to keep track of. Um, we are going to have uh, tilling signups, and I know that people are concerned about that who can't be here tonight. But what we can do is I'm going to send out a Google form. Again, why it's so important that I have a good email or a good cell phone number so that I can send texts. Um, okay, so we'll be doing that. And then also, we are going to be handing out pea seeds tonight. Mm -hmm. So I went through. Um, everybody's going to get a pack of pea seeds. And the best way that I knew how to do it was just to get half a cup and scoop them out and divide it up. <laughs> so that's what I've done with that. Um, and then I wanted to encourage you all. One of the big things, kind of my main goal for this program is to help really build our um, local farmer's market. So the Leslie County Farmer's Market, we have Diane here. She's going to be part of the program. But um, we're also hoping to kind of funnel you all towards that. So if you have um, extra tomatoes or you have extra uh, kale, which Lord knows you always have extra kale for me because I go wild. I just plant kale all over the place. But you can go to the farmer's market and sell. And so um, this year, Leslie County Farmer's Market was awarded the Senior uh, Farmer's Market Nutrition Program as well as the WIC uh, Farmer's Market Nutrition Program. Both of these programs re require that you have Kentucky-grown uh, fruits and vegetables. So it's going to be really important for the success of those programs for us to have local food. Um, and I don't know, I guess I should explain a little bit about myself. Um, I am the local markets coordinator for North Fork Local Food, and um, that's kind of my day job, but I'm also the Perry County Farmer's Market Manager, which is how I kind of fell into the whole world of local food. Um, I'm also the secretary for the Wendover Preservation Council, um, so that's how we were able to utilize this space and, um, and everything. And one of my main goals is to really build, I'm not going to say self-sufficiency, but I want to say community self-support. Does that make any sense? But community support. Because and I always say the thing that I truly believe is it's not so much about how are we going to help the world or how are we going to feed the world, but how are we going to feed ourselves. And if we focus on that, then we take care of everybody. You know what I'm saying? So um, I know that gardening is a it's age-old practice here. And it's, it's fallen out 
a favor. I mean, as it has everywhere. I mean, there's nothing special about Leslie Kim. It's not like we're different. We're just like, well, I don't want to get, but I have had some of my students say that after they like went out and harvested, I don't know how many rows of potatoes, they were just kind of done with gardening for the rest of their <laughs> lives. But personally, I find potatoes to be like little buried treasures. <laughs> so I'm like, if you think of it as buried treasure, that's why I told my kids, it's buried treasure. Let's go look. So kind of thinking of it like that. But I really want us to have a robust uh, farming group, uh, farming community. And I'm not saying that we're all going to have acres and acres, but a small family plot, you can, you, you can have enough to feed your family. Um, and we'll actually be working on that as we get into this. There's a, a how much should I grow like calculator to help you determine how much you need to plant, how much you need to grow in order to feed your family. Um, so we'll be looking at that. The other thing I want to push, and I, it's shameless, but I can't help it, is the East Kentucky Farmer Conference. It's February 24th and 25th. This is one of the most important networking opportunities that um, you'll have uh, in this region. And like I've said, especially after the flood, um, and not just last year's flood, but the flood before that, in 2021, we're trying to strengthen the network of local food. Um, because as you know, you know as well as I do, that food prices are soaring. And that after COVID, we saw the breakdown of uh, global food supply chains. Um, so in order to kind of walk or work around that, we need to focus on really building our local uh, food economy, right? So um, I'm going to hush for a second because I know that there's probably this is probably more about questions this time around than anything. So I'm going to be quiet and um, you guys feel free to let me know if you have any questions. And on Facebook, yes, we can. I, I forgot about that. If you have a question, just post it. No questions? Y'all ready to go? We got a bunch of old pros here. I'm I did. <laughs> Honestly, y'all probably teach me. <laughs> well, well, the main thing um, for this round, for this meeting, I wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to introduce Larry. Um, he's going to be the one that's uh, kind of, he's going to be managing all the heavy duty stuff, <laughs> like the tilling it's, oh, and such. I can't get this picture here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm barely keeping it on you. Um, so we will be, uh, we're going to have tilling signups. Like I said, though, I'll probably do that via email because honestly, that's going to be the easiest way for me to aggregate that information. Um, so if, uh, you do have a plot that needs to be tilled. Um, I'm more of a no-till kind of permaculture over there and a hippie land kind of person. <laughs> but the thing about it is, um, if you if you just have grass in your yard, we'll have to come out and help you out. We are limiting that to, what'd you say it was? A 20 by 20. A 20 by 20 plot, which is bigger than what I've got. And I'd be just fine. <laughs> You know what it will actually grow more food than you think. Oh, yeah. And we'll be talking about, about this that. room? Um, no, not hardly. Not hardly. Probably in that window. That. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's huge compared to what I have. And, and you can do you can do quite a bit. Is um, there limitations to that? I mean, is there like so far out in the county that you go? Or? Yes, thank you for mentioning that. I did have I had some people sign up, and I don't know if they didn't quite understand where we're located. Um, people like out of Georgetown and that sort of thing. Um, I can't. We can't be going to Georgetown. No. <laughs> but if you're in Leslie County, um, then we can do that. And I and I know that um, there are. Uh, I know Leslie County is huge, but I think we do have uh, money in the budget to cover gas and that sort of thing. Um, so, and I know not everybody's going to need that. Um, some people already have the equipment that they can do it themselves. Um, but you know, if you if you don't have the equipment, that's what this program is here to do: is to supplement and kind of get you on your feet, so to speak. Um, but for those of you who are old pros, I mean, <laughs> you don't need that. That's cool. Um, one of the requirements of the program is no use soil testing. Um, so which is actually really helpful for you. Um, I've been growing for years and didn't even know that I needed to add lime to my soil. 
And when I did, there was a huge difference, right? Who's going to be doing the soil testing? You should take it to the extension it's office. The extension. I can I can tell you how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll jump on. Um, say you've got a, a garden like that piece of paper there. Do the corners in the middle and mix it all in one bag. You can screen it a little bit, get some of the rocks and stuff like that out of it and, and just put it all in one bag. If you've got a plot on this side of the house and one on up the road, you want to do two different bags. Mm -hmm. But you just take it to the extension office and they'll send it to UK and you'll get a letter back saying if you need to add nitrogen, lime, whatever, yeah. uh, if you want to grow beans here to um, supplement your nitrogen in the soil or whatever, you know, that's yeah and that's something I, I know that most probably see the <clears throat> Facebook calendar which I'll be sending out um, a calendar uh, via the email that I get or the text but um, ideally uh, you know we'll be talking about different ways to enhance your soil because and I hate to make again I get all like crazy about soil but if that's really what if you want to have a good garden you don't need to be worried about getting good seeds or you know whatever what you need to be focused on is the the health of your soil yeah. um, that's going to make all the difference in the world and that's why um, it's so important next time that's going to be what my, I'm asking you to do it's going to be the most important thing is to bring those soil samples to me so I can get them to extension and we can get that information back quickly because depending on what you need um, mm -hmm. we will be providing um, chicken poop fertilizer <laughs> which is really it smells awful but it's really good um, so, and the good thing I like about that is um, it's not going to burn anything up, right? So it's not it's not like something you're going to get like 10, 10, 10 or whatever out of Lowe's or whatever, but it's also not going to burn up anything. Um, so that's a really safe, especially if you don't know what you're doing. First year when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was, I was throwing that stuff out there thinking the more the better, right? No, <laughs> it's not the truth. So uh, we'll be looking at that. Um, and then, are there any other questions about any sort of expectations of what's coming up or, or something that you want to see in the program? I did have one person ask me if uh, we were going to focus on container gardening. And I had not actually really planned that, but I think that's a really good idea um, to talk about um, different um, strategies for container gardening. I myself used to use raised beds. Um, the thing, I've never really done container gardening much, but the, the biggest difference I have found with that is um, really just watering. <laughs> it just requires a, like, you can't, you're not going on vacation if you're container gardening, okay? So, or, and even to some degree with raised beds, depending on how you do it. Um, that's why I'm kind of more, I like to just throw it in the ground and let it go. But um, with container gardening, we can, uh, we can have some special discussions about that as we move, move along in the program. But were there any requests, like something special that you're wanting to see? Well, this is not a re really a request, but something we did different this year, um, something maybe with your budget, I don't know if it's in your budget or not, but uh, is doing the woven weed fabric on the ground. Oh. If, you're, if you're really, really busy, I love gardening, mm -hmm. but it always before with church, with work, with all that, I'm mm -hmm. so busy that the weeds overtake everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this past year we did uh, woven weed fabric, and it helped. We had a better harvest than we had in years. That's good to know. Tomatoes, beans, peppers, corn, everything. Well, we'll have to look at that because I know um, we're actually having to end up getting a different tiller than what we had originally um, thought because it was on back order. So we might have a little wiggle room now because the tillers we're looking at are considerably less expensive okay. uh, than the other ones. So um, we might be able to look at that. I know uh, one of the things you'll be getting are low tunnels. I don't know if you guys have ever worked with those before. Um, I will tell you now, if you have dogs, don't waste your time. <laughs> they tore mine to shreds. Um, but uh, if you don't have dogs or you have dogs that don't tear things to shreds, that's going to be a really nice way to have like season extension. And it helps a lot with um, pests. And weeds. So, um, but again, as we move, move through this, we'll have a lot of different things that, um, and if you come up with anything or you hear of anything that's um, interesting or that you're just intrigued about, let me know. As I, like, we're really growing together here on this. Um, I don't want you to feel like if that list says we're having a session on fertilizer, that that's the hard and fast and we don't get anything else. We can always kind of 
flesh it out a little bit and see what we want to do. Um, all right, so uh, just a real quick recap. If I do not have a good email address for you, please get me a good email address. Um, if I don't have a good cell phone for you, please get me a good cell phone. If you, if you, and, and I, you like, especially if you got an um, email you don't check a lot or whatever, because um, that's going to be our main form of communication. Um, yes, Heather, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, we are going to be having. Uh, we actually have. Uh, a person I don't know if you've heard of Jesse Frost okay. he has a whole book on no-till and um, he uh, Jesse Frost and his uh, co-founder uh, were kind enough to offer to come and speak to us so we are going to have a whole class on no-till um, I've got his book um, and I've been doing some research just for myself um, so yeah if you're interested in anything like that um, Again, let me know we're gonna have we're gonna have some guest speakers that will be coming in and talking to us about um, some different opportunities there All right. any other questions historically when is the last class yeah I guess it's I usually like okay for example you guys will not be getting your actual plant plants until the end of May and because I have had myself it's really bit me in the butt oh, yeah. <laughs> to plant like I planted you know they always say it's like derby weekend mm -hmm. that you should be able to plant but it's not so you got to be careful that's why I'm waiting until the end of May to actually give you the physical plants to put out because they can't wait you know can't wait with them too long right. um, but yeah, generally I would go for mid May. After Mother's Day. After Mother's Day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, after Derby Day. Yeah, that's what I would always. But of course, you know, I guess it just depends on where you're at. In, and like you say, if you're not getting any sun, <laughs> depends on where. How how like you know covered up your holler is your Paul's Creek. You're waiting. Um, all right, so with that, I, I guess what we'll do is um, I'm going to go ahead and hand out the uh, garden planters as well as the seeds. Again, I don't want to keep people too long because I know the roads are threatening. Um, so, quick recap too, please. If you're interested, we got the East Kentucky Farmer Conference and uh, hoping to really build up a strong farming slash you know, gardening community. And that's something, and I will, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on a tangent real fast. One of the things I found with my work um, through North Fork Local Food and helping out CFA after the flood is um, something that's really not discussed and is really misunderstood by people outside of this region is what we call the informal food system. And we had so many people say, well, no, I mean, I'm not a farmer, but I give, I give it away. And I know full well that's exactly, I grow a garden and we have that little East Kentucky, you know, family complex. We all live right there together and everybody knows that they can just go and get what they want. So um, that informal food network is a really important part of our heritage, but it's also a really, really important part of um, taking, like, of making sure people are fed. It's food access, um, which is, which is a big, it's kind of my heart. It's my big thing. So um, with that, Yes, Marsha wants me to give you, wants me to give you hers. Good. <laughs> oh, my brain is so fucked. No, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna hand you her stuff. Did All right. Uh, Bessie, um, everybody gets plants. That uh, if you come to, if you're part of the program and you come to our May meeting, you will get the plants. That is one of the only meetings where I will not save anything back because the plants will die. I can't. I'm not being responsible for plants for a month. <laughs> so. Um, all right, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to um, go on ahead. You can, if you're watching on Facebook Live, okay. Yes, you can get your stuff at the next meeting. Um, as far as joining, um, if you send, that's where, if you fill out, well, if you're on Facebook, you can just send me um, 
your email address and I can add you to the list where I send stuff out. Um, as far as guest speakers, you'll be getting a calendar that will be listing the guest speakers. Um, and so I think our first one, our first guest speaker I think is April and that's gonna be pesticides, I believe. Um, all right, any more questions before we, we close here? All right, um, so for our next meeting, and I'll be again, we send all this out, it's really, really important that you bring me a soil sample. That can just be in a Ziploc bag or a mason jar, I mean, whatever. It, it has to be dry. Yes, it needs to be dry. Yeah. <laughs> so that's in. gonna be tricky before the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go out and dig, just put it in a box and put it in the dry somewhere so that can be dry, and then you can put it in a bag. Thank you for saying that, because okay. I had forgotten that. Okay. Yes, make sure it's dry. Um, and uh, the other thing too is if you can bring it from two separate sides of where you want to grow because you'd be surprised the difference mm -hmm. um my garden's on a slope and it's real different from one end to the next um okay well uh, that is all and what's the next meeting the next meeting is when is the next meeting february hold on i can't my phone's does anybody have a <laughs> So it is going to be the last Tuesday, so February 28th. So we'll always have the last Tuesday of the month. That was the easiest way I could try to plan it and um, try to get around that event saturation. Tuesdays aren't that big of a day for most things. So, um, so it will be here at the livery um, and we will still have um, a virtual auction, but I really want to encourage everybody when you can come, please do come because that makes all the difference in the world as far as uh, networking and, and discussing. So, all right, um, I'm going to get off here and I appreciate y'all. And if you have any questions, please just you can go to Facebook for Mary Breckenridge's Wendover, you can post your question there. Um, or if you have received an email from me, that is a good way to get a hold of me. You can, uh, and I'll post my email on Facebook as well. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye. You got it. I hope it's all over the place. <laughs>